So the next talk is titled Decentralized Open Communication with Matrix at All. And we have Matthew Hodgson over here. Hello, everybody. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, first of all, thank you for coming to um, not the Rust talk. Uh, I'm sure the Rust talk is probably more cool and more fun and more topical. But hey, let's talk about Matrix. Um, I'm Matthew. I'm the tech lead for Matrix.org. Um, I'm very um, tired right now. I have a migraine. I was meant to be coming up um, this morning by train from London, but in a terrible state of um, disorganization, I ended up flying in just now from Paris, um, where I didn't mean to be, and it's a long story. And basically, I apologize if I'm completely incoherent and overtired. Um, but basically, I want to tell you all about Matrix. I've got loads and loads of stuff to talk about. I'm going to go, is this working or is it flickering weirdly? It's flickering weirdly. That isn't just a visual disturbance. Oh, great. Um, no idea what I can do, if anything, to stop it from flickering weirdly. I mean, is that going to upset anybody? Are you able to hack weird flickering? Or I can try to switch over to uh, HD15, perhaps. Or let me just, I'll just leave it like this. OK, OK, sorry, everybody. Just don't, don't look at the slides. It'll be fine. Uh, it feels like there's a lightning strike happening behind my head every few minutes. Well, OK, whatever. Anyway, yeah, so I'm going to talk about Matrix. I've got lots of stuff to get through. Um, I suggest if anybody has any questions, you just go and yell them at me as we go, um, rather than uh, wait until the end, because it makes it more interesting and uh, less likely for me to go and talk about boring stuff if people force me to talk about interesting stuff. So what's Matrix? We're a nonprofit, open standard, and it's all about defragmenting communication. So. One way of thinking of it is a global encrypted communications network, which basically is trying to provide a platform like the web, but for real-time communication. So rather than having a whole bunch of silos that don't talk to one another, Slack and HipChat and the phone network, even IRC servers, XMPP, all of these different things, what if there was some big meta network which could link them all together um, at a kind of lowest common denominator level, but one that was good enough for all of the kind of standard modern um, purposes? So empirically, if you have a bunch of um, islands like this, and it could be chat networks like Gitter or Skype or Slack, it could be IRC, or it could be apps, things like GitHub, the matrix plonks itself in the middle like this. What you get is a full mesh of servers which participate in a given room, which host the data that describes the conversation history for that room. And it could be instant messages, it could be VoIP signaling, it could be MIDI, it could be virtual reality object graphs, it could be any arbitrary JSON you like that you go and dump into these rooms, and they get replicated ac across the service with um, eventual consistency and with um, cryptographic signing to keep the integrity. It's basically identical to Git, architecturally. So imagine if every time you sent a message to somebody um, you, uh, on a chat system of some kind, you did a git push to a server and that somehow was able to propagate it out in real time to all the other git instances. If you think of these as um, clones of a git repository and each room is a repository, then that's basically what's going on. And you can have native matrix clients which hang off these servers. You have bridges which link through to um, other platforms like Skype. And the whole thing basically provides a big open alternative to the phone network or really mm, to try to fix the fragmentation problem, which especially in the open source world we see all the time as everybody gets split between Telegram and Slack and Gitter and IRC and pigeons and whatever other technology they use. So the whole point here is that no single party owns your conversations. This isn't like um, an XMPP Mac or an IRC server where if the server goes down, you're pretty screwed. Instead, the conversation history is being replicated over everything. So if matrix.org went down, as it often does, unfortunately, um, right now, everybody running their own home servers would just continue without any disruption. Sure, they won't be able to talk to people who are physically seated, uh, seated on the matrix server, on matrix.org server, but everybody else can continue their conversations. And when matrix.org comes back up again, then the fabric um, heals itself, the conversation history gets synchronized in, and everybody ends up on the same page again. So what can you do with this? Obviously, group chat is a major thing. We don't actually do one-to-one -one chat. A one-to-one -one chat in matrix is a room that happens to have two people in it. Uh, you can use it for VoIP signaling using WebRTC. 
Um, we've been looking a bit at using it for communication in VR and AR because there is no standard communication protocol for VR. I mean, it just sucks. People go and fire up a little mumble server or um, um, TeamSpeak or something like that. But you know, if you're in some kind of decentralized virtual space, whether that's built on Matrix or not, there is no way to say, talk to somebody by VoIP, let alone video, let alone instant messaging, apart from Matrix. Um, you can bridge any kind of silo together. Um, the IoT, Internet of Things use cases are kind of cute because you need some kind of neutral data fabric where random devices from different vendors can go and broadcast um, packets of data out into the internet and people can subscribe to them. At the moment, you're basically stuck to silos, whether it's Garmin or Apple or Cisco or IBM or whichever IoT vendor, whereas Matrix gives us a place to just go and publish this in real time anywhere on the web and start kind of building on top of it, doing analytics, sucking it up, doing fun stuff. So basically, in the end, it's a pub sub. Um, a uh, platform or a pub sub protocol, but one that uh, handles persistent signed data. I'm sure lots of people are saying, hang on a minute, isn't this what XMPP is trying to do? They are completely different. So Matrix is one great big spec. It's not a whole cloud of zaps, and that has some pros and cons, but it basically means that if I've implemented the Matrix 0.2.0 spec, then that is a complete sort of baseline across all of the functionality that it can do. Um, the, uh, sure, you can extend it, and the data types are extensible, and you know, the APIs are extensible, but there is a, this very well-defined single monolithic version in going through the entire thing. The primitives you get are completely different. We're synchronizing history here. We're not passing messages. It's not like an XML stanza being handed from A to B. Um, everything's group conversation. End-to-end -end crypto has been designed and almost built in as a first-class citizen from the outset. Um, now, the controversial thing that makes some people throw up at this point is the HTTP and JSON is the baseline API. Now, this is not an efficient engineering choice. It's a very pragmatic one. It means that to send a message in Matrix, I do an HTTP put of some JSON to a URL. If I want to receive a message in Matrix, I do an HTTP get, and that's it. So, okay, it's <laughs> there's some overhead of firing up those HTTP connections, and JSON might not be the most efficient um, serialization format in the world, but anybody can do this, and anybody can write a matrix client completely trivially. Sometimes we get people saying, but I can't find your WebSockets API documentation. That's because we say, well, no, kind of, uh, sorry, our, not WebSockets, our Webhooks API information, and we try to explain, well, we don't really have a Webhook API because it is a HTTP REST um, API. But there's nothing to stop people from doing better transports. We've got a PR for doing WebSocket and JSON um, transport out there at the moment from, from the community, from someone called Crumble. Um, and people have done CoAP and Seabor, um, Cap and Proto based stuff too. But in practice, it turns out that the HTTP and JSON works pretty well. And people use it all the time. Uh, I hear that they've firewalled the IRC um, ports um, on the university Wi-Fi here, whereas, of course, Matrix, being thick old HTTP, can quite happily just keep um, chatting in a way as normal. Finally, Matrix is all about defragmentation, much more, I think, than any other protocol that has tried to solve this, which is why we call it Matrix, because it forms a matrix within which things can talk to one another. If you kind of imagine a bunch of axes with lots of different protocols, then the thing in the middle is the matrix, is matrix. Architecturally, kind of already said about this, um, full mesh of servers within a room, native clients, application servers are kind of like IRC services. They're privileged clients that can do cool stuff. So they can impersonate um, bunches of users. They can go and bridge through to other environments. And I'm going to completely gloss over identity because we don't have enough time. But basically, in Matrix, we don't have uh, well, we, we expect people to find each other based on email address or phone number or whatever identifier they already have. Internally, we do have matrix IDs, but we do not expect people to put these on business cards or have them sort of oh, brilliant. <laughs> have them looking like um, uh, Jabber IDs or SIP URIs or email addresses. I'm going to make an executive decision to go analog, everybody. It's going to be amazing. Go back in time to the days of um, VGA and the Canon D-Type HD15 connector. Come on. 
this one even works. Yeah, this is weird. So we are trying to find a vertical sink. Well, this is um, trying to do its thing. Um, I can probably just keep on talking. Yeah. Except really annoyingly, the next slide is really useful. It's probably the most important one in that it shows the architecture diagram of what you get in Matrix. But I will try to act it out through the medium of interpretive dance instead. <laughs> so at the bottom, you have the protocol itself, <laughs> which, um, <coughs> as I said, looks like a big RFC, basically. It's a single monolithic protocol. Um, defining the HTTP APIs that connect the clients on the top side to the servers on the um, level below. Server-wise, we have one big um, original implementation called Synapse, which is a bunch of Python and Twisted that was honestly a prototype that we did um, originally to prove Matrix, and like all good prototypes, proceeded to um, go live and continue and start getting deployed with hundreds of thousands of users and is still going strong. The only slight catch is that it is Python interested, which is great up until a point that you want to have crazy things like multiple cores in use at the same time, and you hit the global interpreter lock, or um, you come up against some of the places where Twisted was a trailblazer as one of the first asynchronous network libraries back in the day, but has not and always kept up completely with the latest and greatest um, kind of um, things there. So uh, we're in a bit of a tricky situation that Synapse is relatively mature. Lots of people use it. It is a RAM hog, Python's a memory hog at the best of times. And we um, have a fairly inefficient schema on the database level because it's backed typically by SQLite or Postgres. And so what it does is to go and cache all of that stuff in RAM um, to avoid doing these rather inefficient queries on the database. As a result, it takes lots of RAM. And unfortunately, a typical Synapse server, which is participating in big rooms like Matrix HQ, that's got 10,000 people in it and 600 servers, you're kind of talking about three, 400 megabytes of RAM to idle. But the real nastiness is that occasionally there are algorithms which um, spike RAM. And Python is terrible at giving RAM back to the operating system. So in practice, you need to have enough headroom for about two gigs of RAM. So this is probably one of the most embarrassing and sad things about Matrix today. But if you look at my imaginary diagram, we had Synapse here. Next to it is Dendrite. Dendrite is our next generation server, which is written in Golang. And it tries to do everything right that Synapse did wrong. So rather than being a monolithic thing with a single database, here we have lots and lots of different services. Um, so you've got um, services for rooms, room servers. Uh, we've got inbound federation traffic, outbound federation traffic, sending stuff to clients, receiving stuff to clients. Woo, this is looking more promising. Although I think we're back where we started. Um, and um, the idea is that all of these services scale horizontally. So you can have really as many different room servers as you like. So the granularity now of a single process in this ecosystem is like hosting one room. And on top of that, the Go stuff is running about two orders of magnitude faster than Python. Um, all of the services are glued together using um, um, at the moment, Kafka, but we've made it modular so it can be any kind of append-only log. So you basically have all of the different services going and generating a stream of in, uh, events which get consumed and fanned out, and it should be a ridiculously scalable, like sort of hangout magnitude scale um, system when finished. Right now, it's about 60% done, but we've done all of the hard bits, which is all of the crypto, all of the um, eventual consistency voodoo. And one of the weird things about Matrix is that it is a very asymmetric protocol. Um, the client is so easy to write, it's untrue. But the server side is a nightmare, because you basically have something which is a hybrid between a uh, Git version control system and Cassandra. So a lot of people, so somebody reached out the other day and said, right, I'm going to write a Matrix server. I'm going to do it in PHP. And I sort of said, I, I can see why you might think that because it's such a simple API, you just need to implement a little REST servlet to, or whatever PHP script to go and handle this. But unfortunately, this is both the good thing and the bad thing about Matrix, that it is quite, you know, it's a, at least six months, if not a year of um, kind of effort to go into building one of these servers. But Android is looking good, and it's almost done. So here is the diagram that I was um, trying to get everybody to imagine. I've done two boxes. At this rate, we're going to be here at like, midnight, so I might speed up a bit. Um, we also have lots of bridges that link through to other things. 
the orange stuff are third party um, projects. We've got a really big um, community working on Matrix. On the server side, we have things like Rumor, which is a Rust um, um, home server, which at the moment I think is a bit blocked behind us fixing a lot of the spec stuff which we're ironing out whilst implementing Dendroit. And then on the client side, we have full native stacks on the web and on iOS and on Android. And these are split into the thing which um, is um, uh, just wrapping the HTTP API itself. But it turns out there's quite a lot of logic that needs to go into this, especially if you want offline operation, if you want end-to-end -end encryption, all that good stuff. Then you have UI components, which sit on top. Um, which give you timelines and VoIP things and all that sort of thing. And then finally, on top of that, you can build apps. And a typical app is something like Riot, which is um, the kind of flagship client which um, we work on, not as part of matrix.org, but as a separate entity called Vector, um, who go and, uh, which is us basically trying to build useful stuff on Matrix and in the future to pay the bills. Um, so what do you get here? Well, basically gone for it all already. Let me um, quickly... Zoom it out. Does that even work? No, of course it didn't. Ah, I'm in PowerPoint. Please don't kill me. We're not meant to be in PowerPoint. We're meant to be looking at that. OK, now it's better. Um, so what do you get? You get uh, conversation history, obviously. You have two primitives here. You've got the timeline of a room, but you also have key value storage for a room. So things like a room's name, who's in it, the topic, avatars, all that sort of thing is key value stores. But the timeline itself is the conversation history. Um, end to end, I think we've basically gone through all of this. Some of the more exciting stuff is you get push notification rules calculated server side, synchronized over your devices. We have server side search, read receipts, typing notifications, presence. Um, turns out that synchronized read state and unread counts are a nightmare because every single time any message goes anywhere through, you have to recalculate everybody's different notification rules and decide whether they should get a new badge or not. And it takes probably about three quarters of the CPU of sending a message. Oh, and wow, am I running out of time on this. Um, how does it work? Uh, very quickly, you've got basically um, a mm, DAG, a, di di well, a direct to cyclic graph of nodes here, which end up getting replicated in a room. I would show you an animation if I had time. Um, so what, what actually is this? Should we look at it? Um, so here is an example of Riot Web. So this is a React uh, web app. And um, right now, in about 1,000 rooms, so if anybody has a Slack which can scale up to 1,000 rooms, I'd be interested to hear from them. Um, so these are all my one-to-ones and all sorts of conversations going on here. Um, I'm not sure who he is, but he reached out the other day. All sorts of random people use Matrix. Um, and uh, OK, this is a boring room. This is <laughs> Michael's <laughs> room where he's working on Riot Static, um, which is a static um, um, uh, Matrix client, which actually has no overlap with Riot at all but we've called it Riot Static because it um, can act as a kind of search engine friendly version of the same content. Um, perhaps, show, will it work if I click on the Heroku link? The one on the bottom. The one on the bottom. Ah, OK. Yeah, like all the best demos, this is running off that laptop there. <laughs> so Michael's our GSOC student and one of them um, for, this, uh, for this year. So here's a totally different view of things. Let's go into Matrix HQ here, which has got 9,000 people in it right now. And clearly, your cache hasn't warmed up. So I'll go and look at it on my copy here. Um, so yeah, here are the 9,000 odd people. And you can see, uh, oh, there's Penguin42 typing. Yeah, except I can't type. Well, I can demonstrate our brand new mention support, which um, allows us to have pretty um, lo uh, like pill-like um, mentions like that. Other people. Um, typing back, this is very exciting. You can see typing notifications bubbling down the right-hand side as a Tetris thing, another fundamental feature that um, um, Slack somehow doesn't have. Uh, again, this is um, uh, replicated over about 600 servers, of which probably 300 are online right, right now. And we've got yeah, not, um, all of these people there. So um, this is just um, text chat. If we scroll back, then you can see people talking from IRC being linked in from Freenode. So probably some people coming in from Discord. You can see URL previewing going on. Nothing particularly exciting in terms of messages. Uh, apparently, I should be glad that the Guadalc talk isn't today because the weather was miserable yesterday. Um, ch -ch 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 -ch. Uh, let's go and upload some random thing into here. Hopefully, nothing too inappropriate. 
I'll just do my standard XKCD so everybody can point and laugh at um, how um, standards proliferate. But from a dev perspective, the fun thing we can do here is to just look at the JSON underneath. And you can see my matrix ID. You can see some freeform JSON. In this instance, it's giving the dimensions and the size and the MIME type, et cetera, of the file. And um, if we look at a less exciting message like Michael here, then this one's going to be dead simple. It's just saying the body, and it's a message type of m.txt, and that's it. But it is you know, free form of any kind. And wow, am I running out of time. Um, let me show you a totally different client. This one, um, so don't kill me, it's um, uh, written in Qt, um, but it's um, shamelessly looking quite a lot like um, Telegram. It's um, contributed by a guy called Mujex um, um, somewhere in Greece. And uh, it's basically the same stuff. We've got infinite scrolling going on here, looking pretty slick. It's much, much, much lighter weight than Riot Web, which is um, on desktop and Electron app whereas this is all entirely native. This one is actually not using any of our SDKs. It's been written from scratch, um, from the ground up, to just do what needs to be done. Uh, what else can I show you? I'm going to start going incredibly fast through the slides, if that's all right. Um, talked about home servers already. Matrix APIs. So yeah, basically, to send a message, you do a post, and it looks like that. If you want to set up a WebRTC call, then it's a bit more complicated, but it's still one HTTP put to do an invite for the call, one HTTP put to do the answer, and then you're done. Everything okay? Uh, we're, we're, we're trying to figure out uh, how much uh, time stuff will take, so I think that the... Uh, okay, so I, I've just had a five-minute warning there, which is why I'm trying to speed up by a factor of four. <laughs> Am I good? Okay, Andrew X. <laughs> okay, cool. That makes a lot of sense. I was thinking, oh my god, I know I've got a migraine, but time dilation is really screwed if I like lost 20 minutes in here. <laughs> Did I like freeze for 20 minutes? And everybody patiently waited for me to move again, and then I just anyway, whatever. Um, so WebRTC calls uh, are dead easy. Here's a sequence diagram. Literally do one, hit, uh, one HTTP put to invite the person. You might put some others if you have some additional candidates of the RTP streams you're putting through. Um, the other guy answers with a single HTTP hit, and then you're in the call. If anybody has ever done SIP or Jingle or stuff, you hopefully are rejoicing at this idea that it's an um, um, uh, easier way to do VoIP. Um, so I'm, if I've got more time, perhaps I'll very quickly do a VoIP call. Um, let me start a conversation uh, with somebody. Uh, Michael, is this going to work horrifically because you're on? I'm not that good on the top of the world. Ah, let's try it. What can go wrong? Um, so you're uh, Michael in there. There you are. So he's on his own home server. Um, I'm on matrix.org here. Um, so we're also going to be testing um, Federation here. Obviously, we need do um, markdown. Oh, except I've got markdown turned off. If I press that button, then we do markdown. Ah, in theory. Anyway, you there? Yeah. Yay, boot. So hopefully, if I just go and press that button there, and the planets align in roughly the right direction, then this is just using plain old WebRTC in the browser to go and place call, and Michael goes and answers it, and like all unscripted, unplanned demos, it isn't going to work. Prob are you running a term server on your home server? So this is a perfect example of one of the slightly unfortunate bits of um, the VoIP bit of Matrix, because basically, if you are doing a federated call like that, you do need to have a turn server running alongside the home server. And we bundle one alongside Synapse, and turn is basically a media relay that does firewall traversal. So if you are on some heavily locked down um, university net connection, turn is cool, and it will go and tunnel the media over HTTPS or whatever in order to make it work. But if um, we were talking to somebody on the matrix.org server, anybody on matrix.org wants to try demoing against me? What is your MX ID, sir? Nah. Let me go and. Um, sorry. CAD. Cool. Let's try. I'm hoping this is magically going to work now. Well, there we go. So let's try this again. And hopefully, 
You might have to give it WebRTC permissions. Nice to go. Ah, uh, boo. Uh, well, it might be because I'm also on the develop branch here, which is the um, continuous integration um, bleeding edge um, side of things. It looked like it thought it was working. But um, what we can do is to go and look at the source here, which is fairly horrific because it's taking the STP, if anybody knows the beautiful STP protocol, to describe the media stream that my browser was trying to emit, but then just wrapping it up in some JSON, chucking it over as an M call invite. And if we look, well, I guess we never got an answer there, which is why it wasn't working. Anyway, let's, let me stop doing bad demos and um, go back to the scripts. Oh, I've got inbound video call briefly. Oh, and then you have not. Okay, let, let's run a mile from the VoIP demos because they aren't working today. Um, if you want to do something else like persistent MIDI, then just make up some um, JSON schema data type. So we literally did do MIDI over Matrix so that people can jam over it and have a copy of what they played on their keyboards going into Matrix. Um, uh, we also did avatar, um, 3D animation -y stuff, but I'll talk a bit more about that in a bit. Then you've got the server-server API, which is probably totally illegible here, but this is a bit more chunky because the server is signing the events with these elliptic curve um, signatures. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, you've got the little ones, perfect one, clearly. Uh, no, you don't. <laughs> This is my fault for using a Mac. I mean, this is clearly Apple's fault and no Stan's fault. Okay, sorry about that. Um, so basically, the server server API is more chunky. Things are signed all over the place um, for integrity and for, to prove the server which originated the data. We use perspectives rather than X509 signatures um, for the TLS um, signatures of the traffic there. Um, then we've got um, the application service API, which I talked about. These do virtual users, virtual rooms, and bridge through to other networks. And so you can use this for all sorts of things, um, bots, filters, translations, visualization, bridges. But bridges are probably the good one. Um, a sim they can be really simple. This is an actual AS um, written in Python. So it's what, 10, 20 lines of code. Um, that goes and implements a single endpoint to receive data from the Synapse or the home server, and then it just prints out everything that happens on every room on the server. Um, bridges, though, are where it starts to get really interesting. So you have your existing matrix um, network, and you've got an existing app here, and you go and do a bridge to link it through. Um, you probably saw an XKCD recently, um, which um, showed that the, um, Randall has a hard time keeping track of which contacts use which chat systems and we took a, this and graffitied all over it to try to spell out this is the whole point of matrix that rather than having all these guys in these different subsets of bubbles instead they can just be bridged together and this as of a few months ago is the state of bridging um, none of them are out of beta with a possible exception of the irc one which is pretty good now um, but there's a lot of beta ones there slack and irc um, Twitter, um, Discord and things, and lots of alpha ones too, where we're being a bit more experimental. And since this, we've also got some sort of WhatsApp ones, we've got a Signal one as well, um, which are a bit dodgy because um, neither um, want third-party clients connecting to them, which is basically what happens here, except the third-party client runs server-side. Um, typical bridging stack is Node, JS SDK, App Service, Bridge, and then a whole bunch of things on top. Um, so the IRC one, well, you saw some traffic there um, earlier. We've got equivalent Slack, Smurfs. Um, LibPurple is one where we could do with help. I did this as a proof of concept years ago, and for whatever reason, everybody is scared of working on LibPurple, and nobody has finished it. But this is really sad, because LibPurple can obviously talk to everything already. So if you run it server-side as a bridge, you immediately link into Facebook and critical networks, such as AIM and ICQ. Um, or, for that matter, Link or whatever more useful things that LibPurple can speak. So if anybody wants a fun project, please talk to me about picking up Matrix App Service Purple and um, all of its GLibby goodness and um, um, see what, uh, how, what we can do with um, it. 
Um, we had a really cool um, demo where we did a control to drone um, using the native API of this Parrot Bebop drone to talk to something on this side, which has the horrible proprietary binary um, C API, and then on the other side, you've got um, Matrix, and you can video call the thing, and you can literally type launch, and the thing would launch, and forward, back, etc. I used to do uh, conferences until it all went horribly wrong. Turns out the flying drones around in a room like this isn't that good an idea, who knew? Um, it ended up crashing into Ward Cunningham, who invented the wiki. Um, FreeSwitch is another example um, where we do VoIP, um, use FreeSwitch to go through to H323 or ISDN or um, SIP or whatever. And uh, this is, yeah, that's, well, it's basically what the, <laughs> the XKCD showed earlier. These are the ones which we work on as the official team, and these are the community ones. Um, identity, kind of touched on this already. Um, basically, we have these matrix IDs, but we don't want people to use them. Instead, we want to use all the other IDs they already have. Uh, therefore, we have identity services, which map through, and we have a simple Python implementation. But honestly, this is a mess. Right now, it's a centralized server. Um, it does store a lot of sensitive data. Uh, we want to track reputation, and uh, it's very much an open area of research, decoupled entirely from the rest of Matrix um, in terms of how do you map these identifiers around the place. Possible things we can do in the future is something like Keybase, except Keybase, irritatingly, is effectively centralized, and it doesn't handle email. Um, the Blockstack guys have got interesting ideas. Um, there's Brad Fitz's WebFist thing, but it only works for email. Um, poor old Mozilla Persona was vaguely in the right direction until... Um, lots of um, decentralized ledger things. DNS stuff, basically, there, there, there's a lot of um, uh, interesting work to be done there to improve how you discover who you want to talk to in Matrix. I think I just need to unplug it and replug re it again. I think it's trying to be far too smart and then it's going through this funky um, HCMI switcher thing that probably doesn't work. Okay, are we back? Great. Um, yeah, everybody needs this basically for Matrix. It's the same problem of how do I map an email address to a Bitcoin ID or any other Zuku's triangle identity mapping problem. Um, status. We started this um, uh, I'm getting on for three years ago. We are still in beta, but it's pretty mature in many places, if not all. Um, we've got about one and a half million accounts now on the matrix.org server. We see about 1.1 uh, 1 .1 million messages a day. Um, of those 400k uh, real accounts for real people as opposed to virtual accounts for IRC users or Slack users, etc. Um, and a whole bunch of other stats. We've got about 2,700 deployed servers, which isn't great, honestly. It's probably because Synapse is a pain in the ass to run because it uses so much RAM. Hopefully, Dendrite will make that much better. Uh, the server chews about 2,000 messages a second um, out and about 20 messages a second in. And a whole bunch of people who build on top of Matrix, um, people like Talis Group have a fork of um, um, all of this in the App Store we found the other day. Um, Ericsson have a business use, uh, unit building on top of it, and there are all sorts of um, open sourcey types, like Wikimedia Foundation or Mozilla, or um, I think Red Hat have some servers um, inside, as do Suzy and others, um, who are basically using Matrix um, for, for useful things. I've um, already shown you Riot, plus here it is running on Android. It's also on the F-Droid store, as well as on iOS. Um, so a cool thing that I would show you if we had more time coming up is um, modular. This is actually, I think, the first time I've spoken about modular to anybody outside the team. So this is a very sneak preview. Probably means I'm using the wrong deck. Um, <laughs> and uh, modular is an app store um, for hosting matrix um, integrations. So these guys, uh, if I zoom in a bit, could be bridges. So if you want to add a bridge into a room, then you just go and click on one of these app icons to add one in. Or it could be bots, things like GitHub or Wikipedia search or you know, Travis or whatever. But it could also be widgets. And widgets are coming very soon, and they look a bit like this. So this is the ability to start building dashboards of arbitrary content into matrix rooms. So if you had like a Grafana live um, app instance, and you basically want to take it in an iframe and stick it into the room so that everybody on every matrix client has the ability to see what's going on, this is what is landing in the next week or two. And we've done about six or seven widgets, um, including any old iframe. Um, so you've got things like Google Docs in there. 
quite excited about, um, to put some of the um, LibreOffice um, online stuff um, in there as well. And the idea is basically you can start building proper war rooms. So everybody jumps onto a, um, I know, a DevOps room and everybody has precisely the same monitoring graphs that they're looking at and they can co-browse them together and they can start screen sharing. They can, we've got a terminal share widget that goes and takes your um, um, random terminal and you know, uses it like a screen to publish it into the room and basically get people a lot more on the same page. It's an experiment. We don't know how it's going to work, um, but it's something, again, that the likes of Slack doesn't do, um, and we're rather excited about seeing what happens with it. Um, let's see what else have we got. I've probably got five minutes left. Ish. Okay. So um, this is a graph of users over time on the matrix.org server. As you can see, it keeps accelerating. And uh, honestly, a lot of the last year has been desperately optimizing Synapse just so that it works for this kind of use, um, user base on our own server. Um, the traffic, likewise, is, and this is daily messages a day, you can see it spiking up above a million messages a day, has followed, well, perhaps unsurprisingly, almost precisely the same shape um, of graph over time. Um, random quick one, VR. As I mentioned earlier, there's no interoperable communication for VR. Matrix could be it. And one of the things we did was um, um, to use Matrix um, to mess around in the holodeck. Um, and I'm trying to do another live demo with VoIP, except this time it's going to be even more experimental. The chances of it working are pretty much no, but let's try it anyway. So this is just using the JS SDK, and I'm going to create a room like this. And I'm going to chuck this into um, oh, and under if I can get somebody to use. I'm going to chuck it into our internal matrix room here to see hey, anyone around fancy joining me in this. And obviously, it being midday on a Saturday, I'm sure that somebody from the core team is desperate to jump onto a video conference with me. But let's find out. And I've lost my window already. Oh, oh no, it's the wrong one. Ah, where's it gone? I had it a second ago. Oh, there it is. OK. Hmm, that shouldn't be happening. So this is um, WebVR. WebVR kicks ass. This is um, uh, WebGL running here in Chrome, but it also works um, very nicely in Firefox. And um, it's using a library called A-Frame, written by folks um, um, originally at Mozilla. And you can see that I'm wandering around this virtual world to this um, holodeck for old time's sake. And the spinner means that it's not connecting to Matrix, which is going to make the demo a bit sucky. So let me <laughs> go and hit refresh on that and pray that it comes out this time. Come on, you can do it. I'm just going to see what it's actually choking on. Uh, all right. This would be a great time to talk about our funding problem. So all of this, <laughs> all of this has been um, sponsored historically by a big telco supplier. Um, who uh, we work for as a core team. Originally, we were doing proprietary um, closed source um, telco messaging apps for people like Singtel and Tim Brazil, um, going and basically building clones of WhatsApp and Hangouts and selling it to big telcos. It was all great, and people were using it. We were getting like two, three million users in Brazil, which isn't bad for a telco app. Meanwhile, WhatsApp had like 98.4% um, market penetration. And why, as an end user, why would you use an app that was branded from a telco when all your mates are on WhatsApp or whatever? So that's where Matrix came from, basically us saying, hang on, why don't we go completely off-piste, go open source, go non-profit, try to build out this crazy new world such that everybody can benefit from it. And you know, if it works, then perhaps someday we can go and sell AT&T a big Matrix deployment and pay our bills. The slight catch is that Matrix, as you saw, is doing pretty well. You know, the graphs are going in the right direction. People are using it. We've got lots of people building it. And uh, the parent company had put a lot of money into it over the years. And they got to the point a few weeks ago of saying, well, Matrix looks great. Why are we paying for it? Surely everybody else should be paying for it. Why isn't Ericsson paying for it? And blah, blah, blah. And so we basically lost all of our funding about three weeks ago. 
So if there's anybody very rich or generous who works for any very rich and generous companies in the audience who wants to help me pay the salary for the 15 people who work on Matrix, please get in touch, like seriously, because we've got relatively little runway left. We're doing a lot of grant applications. We've got Patreon donations set up. Please support us if you think this is cool. Um, but one of the amusing side effects is that we've also been kicked out of all of our data centers that Tris was running in. And so we've migrated over to a lovely outfit called UpCloud, who are sponsoring us. Thank you, UpCloud. Um, but this particular backend for the conferencing thing apparently has not been migrated yet. And so it's been turned off in the old data center and has been moved over to the new one, which is a shame because it's a really, really cool demo. But basically what we would have is a whole bunch of WebRTC calls. This is a static video telling you what to do. But you might to click on that and <laughs> there's a phone box with a great big um, um, don't click here thing on it, which if I clicked here would try to take me into the conference room. But the end result would look just like this and you have as many as you like. And the fun thing is that it is underneath just a matrix room and if people start typing and chatting and sending messages into the room or images or whatever, then it all comes bubbling up on the, um, uh, on, in the VR environment. I think I'm pretty much out of time. Um, I could talk lots and lots about ohms. This is an ohm. It's a blind salamander. Um, they're really cool. It's the name of our crypto ratchet. Um, Open Whisper Systems and Signal had Axolotl. We had ohm because it's basically the European version of the same thing. Um, blah, blah, blah about end-to-end. -end. I don't have any time to talk about it, but there's some good stuff there. I'll go and post the minutes of this. We got it assessed by NCC Group, um, paid for by... Um, the Open Tech Fund, which um, was really, really useful. And so LibOM itself, which is the C library, um, is known to be relatively OK now. And I've been told to finish up. Um, metadata privacy is an embarrassing bit of matrix. Honestly, we're not protecting metadata. If you want to be metadata protected, then go use Ricochet or Pond or Buvizela or something. Um, because the second we bridge to anything else, we obviously lose um, metadata. We have a way of doing it, it's more like Ring, um, where we go peer to peer, but it's sci-fi right now. It looks like that. You basically have hidden services in Tor, and you run the home service on the client, and I really am finishing now. Um, latest release info, you can go and read the release notes yourself. End-to-end, -end, we've got a bunch still left to do, but it's looking pretty good. Matrix, we've got widgets coming, we've got groups, which are going to change everything, which is allowing you to define groups of users and basically have Facebook group style functionality. And then finally, I spoke about funding fun already. Um, so yeah, we basically incorporated a new company um, called New Vector, um to look after the team going forwards. And we're also incorporating Matrix as a nonprofit. And the way that you can help is please, please, please donate on Patreon, as in literally we're relying on Patreon to pay one guy's salary. Um, Libra Pay 2 for the open source solution. You c if you're a company and you think this sounds cool, please sponsor us, and we're hoping that will help things a lot. Or if you want us to buy useful stuff, um, that, uh, it builds useful stuff for you, then you can buy consulting from the for-profit New Vector company. And tell everybody, tell them on Twitter, tell them on Mastodon, or tell them on Matrix. Thank you very much. <laughs> Do I have any time for questions, or am I? We don't have time for questions. Okay. Sorry, I ran long. Come and ask me on Matrix. It's great.